This video is brought to you by Squarespace. More about them at the end of the video. I'm at Federation Square. This is an iconic Melbourne site. Today we're going to see something special. We're not going to be up high. We're actually going to go underneath Fed Square, where there's a 1.4 kilometre labyrinth. Now this underground maze has a unique role, and we're going to explore what it's all about. So Federation Square is one of Melbourne's leading cultural and community sites. It's located directly opposite Flinders Street Station, and it's about the size of a city block. So Federation Square reached out to show me this special place, and I want to show it to you first, then explain what it's all about. First stop was heading underground, where all of the businesses that reside at Fed Square have all their deliveries. Then we made our way to the plant and equipment room. So this is the start of the labyrinth. Now I haven't been in here yet, so this is me diving in for the first time. So that's all the way from ground to ceiling in these kind of spiky points. Let's have a look at how dark it is with this off. All right, from this. So what is this for? This is a thermal labyrinth and it's used to regulate temperatures in Fed Square in an energy efficient way. And here's how it works. So during Melbourne's hot summer nights, what will happen is cool night air is pumped through from the adjacent Yarra River and pumped through the system via fans. This then cools the vast concrete walls as it makes its way through the labyrinth. The following day as temperatures rise, this outside air is pumped through and as it makes its way through the 1.4 kilometer maze, it loses its heat energy, being cooled as it goes. This is then pumped into Federation Square, lowering temperatures. So the reason behind this is sustainability. How can you cut down on the energy use that it takes to cool or warm an enormous space like the Fed Square Atrium? Now this isn't the only model that people have used in history, and it turns out there are some really fascinating designs in different places around the world. Now as you can see, these are pointed, and it runs from the ground all the way to the top, which is around three and a half metres up. Now this serves a practical purpose. What it does is it increases the surface area, so it captures more of that warmth or cool air. I want to show you the different parts of the system, but also show you where the air ends up, because it's a pretty clever approach and something that thousands of visitors have probably never ever noticed. So these are the air inlet vents for the fresh air. What happens is the fresh air comes in off the Yarra, and this is the first stage of filtration. So this is the filter, and they use a cardboard filter. Now this gets replaced every three months, and what it does is it pulls out all the particulate matter before going through the system. And this is what the other side of it looks like. So that's the arrow just in there. And then as you can see on the Federation Square side, you can see this facade and there's plenty of gaps for the air to flow through. And if you didn't know what you're looking for, you probably wouldn't even notice that it exists at all. During winter, the outside temperature is gonna be cooler than inside the labyrinth. So in this case, the cold air is pumped through the system. Now the surface area of the concrete is gonna be warmer than the air. So what happens is it loses its heat energy, warms the air and it's pumped through into Federation Square. Now this difference can be quite significant, up to seven degrees warmer than the outside air. So this is a thermal labyrinth and generally these are held underground where this kind of is. But what makes Fed Square unique is that it's not built on ground level. It's built over the railway lines as trains head into Flinders Street Station. So this is in a unique spot where it's above the train line, but below Fed Square proper. Now this is a structural part of Federation Square and the actual decking is built right on top of this. And that makes the materials used incredibly significant. Esme was just saying that this looks like I'm about to tell some ghost stories. But I've been informed that there hasn't been any ghosts of note or any incidents here. Um, it's been around for, for 20 years. There are some historical stories though worth exploring um, down by the, by the river. Because this area obviously has a fascinating history. It's kind of been um, used since the very start of Melbourne. That said, I think there are probably worse places you could film your own scary little ghost story than this one. And that just leaves one more stop on our tour. This is the atrium, and this is where all of the air, whether it's warm or cool, ends up. Now you might wonder, whereabouts does it come from? Because there's no obvious signs of vents around. But if you look under your feet, you can see these slats, and that is the source of the air. Now the atrium is a huge space, and there are some challenges in keeping it at the right temperature. Firstly, it's designed so that it's open to the elements. Now that's, of course, a challenge. But also it's a big glass structure. You might imagine that in the heat of the summer, it starts to heat up. Now I've made a video about the world's largest glass house, so feel free to check that out. And the answer to that is also what they used in Singapore, which are vents at the top, to vent out all of the extremely hot air. So that means when it's hot outside, this is not a bad place to be. In the winter you can feel the warmth, and in the summer you'll be able to feel the cool. 
And yes, kulf is a word which I only learnt while researching this video. And there are different vents with different purposes. At this end of the atrium is where the air comes into the space, and there are two at the other end, which is where they get sucked in and put back into the system. What that does is it creates airflow through the space. So this has been a pretty remarkable place, and thanks to Fed Square for showing me around. Now I'd love to make more content like that in Melbourne and around the world, and that's made possible by sponsors, including today's Squarespace. My life has certainly changed making content from the internet, reaching out to people and hearing about great stories. And if you're interested in making your own website, check out Squarespace. It's a beautiful and powerful online platform that helps people make their own websites. Squarespace lets you connect with your audience and make revenue through members-only content. You can manage your members, send email, and if you're a data nerd like me, you can check out audience analytics and insights. All in one, easy to use platform. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash julianoshea for 10% off your first website or domain. I'm Julian O'Shea, thanks for watching.